Hi everyone, welcome back to our devotion time. Today's February 11th and our devotion is titled Worship Now and Worship Then from Revelation 5, 8, and 9. Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lord, before the Lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints, and they sang a new song. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you today for this word. Lord, we ask that you would teach us to help and help us to understand exactly why our praise is so important. Father God, help us to see how much praise and worship from a heart that is full of love toward you is so very important to you. That Lord, you actually desire and want us to praise you. Help us to open our hearts. Help us to open our minds to change in any way that we need to so that we would come before you in spirit and in truth every day and give you the worship and the praise that you so justly deserve. Holy Spirit, I pray for your anointing today upon my words, and I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. When the Apostle John saw the revelation of heaven, one theme dominated much of the vision, praise and worship. In spite of the conflict and struggles on earth depicted in John's vision, there is never any doubt who reigns over all. Everyone in heaven and on earth is occupied with praise that will go on forever. In Revelation 5, John pictures three categories of beings who are seen praising God in what is perhaps the Bible's greatest chapter of praise. The elders representing the redeemed, verses 8 through 10, innumerable angels, verses 11 through 12, and every other created being in heaven and on earth, verse 13. Each group has their own refrain of praise, extolling the one who sits on the throne and the Lamb of God. The impression is that this praise is ongoing, never ending, the continual refrain of heaven. If you are one of God's redeemed children, a future prey of praise and worship awaits you in heaven. As you anticipate the joy of worshiping God in heaven, prepare by worshiping Him through song as you go about your day. So, praise God. I want us to <clears throat> I want us to jump over really quick to Revelation. And I want us to look at those verses that he referenced here. Okay. So he references verses 11, th 11 through 12, or 8 through 10, 11, 12, and 13. So let's start here. Um, this is when the scroll of the Lamb was opened. Okay. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed people for God, from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom and priests to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. Now that is talking about the redeemed, okay? That's talking about us who have been redeemed. Then I looked and I heard around the throne and the living creatures and the elders, the voice of many angels numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands. Oh my goodness. How many angels are singing around the throne of God, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Praise God. And that represented the innumerable angels. Let's see. He doesn't, he doesn't say that, but they're representing All the worship that was that was Jesus was given and is given as the Lamb of God, that He they represent everything that Jesus received. 
their worship, all that he received. And if you remember, we've talked about this before, but that we receive his inheritance. We receive in in the same way we will receive the, our inheritance with him of power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing because we are the redeemed. We will receive our inheritance along with him. And then it says, and I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them saying to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. So every living creature in heaven and on earth, every creature is going to cry out to Jesus and worship him on that day. Amen. That's in heaven and that's in on the earth. Worship. Praise and worship. I'm sorry, guys. I have, you know, I take blood thinners and I apologize. Um, I've got a, my finger is bleeding and I'm trying to get it to stop and I just dripped blood on my Bible. I'm cleaning it. <laughs> it, it came off of my finger. It's um, so sorry for that. I apologize. I don't want to start the video over again. So we'll have this memory right here every time we see that page of Tara bleeding I guess <laughs> I'm gonna put a tissue around it um I take blood thinners so when I when I cut myself in the slightest I bleed for a while that's the problem anyway back to our devotion so I've mentioned to you guys many times um that I'll turn on worship music right and we'll and we'll just praise and worship the Lord in in music okay and I usually play instrumental music, and I wanted to tell you about the person I normally listen to, and it's because his music is very soothing to me. His name is Stephen Moctezuma, and the spelling of his name is Stephen with a V. And his last name is spelled M-O-C-T-E-Z-U-M-A, Moctezuma. And he has his own channel on YouTube. And it's just Stephen Moctezuma. And I just encourage you to listen to some of his music. He does do videos where he's singing or leading praise and worship for the pastor he works with, who's David Diga Hernandez. That's his name. But he also <clears throat> has these instrumental videos. And those are the ones that I go to often. And the reason I do, I listen to those, I do, I listen to those when I do these devotions for you guys. Um, and when I do my own study, I listen to them because praise and worship music for me calms my heart. It quiets my heart and my mind. Um, it just really does. It helps me to quiet down inside and to kind of push out the distractions and the world. <laughs> and so praise and worship music welcomes the Holy Spirit. Now I'm going to be reading to you from my notes today. I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk out of my head nearly as much as I'm going to tell you what the Lord gave me this morning because I really, I don't want to miss any point of what the Holy Spirit really shared with me this morning about worship. So if I sound like I'm reading a little bit, it's because I am, but I want to make sure that I say to you what I felt the Lord give to me. Praise and worship music welcomes the Holy Spirit's presence and it quiets the distractions of life and it ushers in the presence of God, okay? So that music playing, it just sets a, a tone for the atmosphere. It really does. And I want to go over to the book of Psalms, chapter 150. There are so many passages about worship, okay, that I... I didn't even write them all down. I'm sorry. There was just so many. I was like, you know what? What I want to tell you guys to do is get on Google and look up passages on worshiping the Lord. Because there you're going to find um, 
just countless references to scripture. And you can go in and study those and on your own time and really spend some time activating the word of God in this area. Chapter 150 of Psalm, of the book of Psalms says, Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are to praise God with everything in us. Amen. And <clears throat> God's word tells us to lift our voices, to lift our instruments. And if you are a singer, your voice is an instrument unto the Lord. And it tells us to shout to him. Okay. To to. Him with shouts of joy and praise. God loves for his children to sing to him. He loves for us to shout out his name, to shout unto him, to raise your heart to him in worship. There's no limits in his word, okay, when it comes to praise. If you study scriptures that talk about praising God, you're going to find that you are not limited. Amen? This may be a bit controversial. Okay, I'm going to tell you something and it is a bit controversial controversial but i want to make a point here because it is a fact that there are so many examples in the word of god that that support or that there's no examples in the word of god that support the quiet non-physical nearly ashamed expressions of worship that we see in many churches or denominations today. Now, I want to point out that I was raised in a denomination like that. So I'm not speaking about something that I don't know or that I'm just sitting back in judgment about. I was raised that we were not to demonstrate in church our love for God in any type of loud voice, clapping of hands, even musical instruments were not played. Many of you will know what church I, my family came out of. I took myself to a Baptist church when I was 10 years old, a Southern Baptist. But prior to that, I was in a church of Christ. Now, I just want to say I understand fully the church of Christ's teachings on this topic. I was raised in it. And coming from Kokomo, Indiana, the Church of Christ is a very predominant denomination there. So I just, I don't want to offend anyone, but there are, there is nowhere in the word of God that tells us that we should not be demonstrative in our praise of the Lord. And there is no scripture in the New Testament that mentions musical instruments. However, there is no scripture in the New Testament that decries using musical instruments. And so I just want to say to anybody out there, no offense, but I was brought up in that church and I understand the theory behind it, but I do not agree with it. I don't think it's biblical and... I want to encourage anyone who finds themselves not feeling comfortable in demonstrating their worship to the Lord to really study the scripture on this subject and think about it, okay? And really pray about it. I want to go over to 2 Samuel. This is the one part that I wanted to mention because there is many, many times in the word of God that we're told to be demonstrative to the Lord. We're told to shout. We're told to clap our hands. We're told to dance. We're given examples of that through different people. But David is the big one that we're given an example of even dancing before the Lord. And I want to read 2 Samuel verse uh, chapter 6. And I want you to go there with me. And this is 
this this particular pericope is talking about David and Michael, his wife. And it's when the ark was being brought back into Jerusalem and David was rejoicing, okay? And he was singing and he was dancing and he was rejoicing before the Lord. And it says, as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael, the daughter of Saul. Now remember, she was the daughter of Saul, his enemy. She was taken from her husband because she had been promised to David when they were young. And then Saul had given her to another man. And when David came, came into his kingship, he took her back because she had been promised to him. So there was some resentment there anyway about her, but from her. But it says, Michael, the daughter of Saul, looked out the window and saw King David leaping and dancing, leaping and dancing. And this is a king. He was leaping and dancing before the Lord. And she despised him in her heart. In other words, she hated seeing him do that. She resented his worship, his freedom before God. She thought he was being a fool. And it says, And they brought the ark in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And when David had finished the offering, the burnt offerings and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts and distributed among all the people the whole multitude of Israel, both men and women, a cake of bread, a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins to each one. Then all the people departed, each to his house. And David returned to bless his household. But Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How the king of Israel honored himself today, uncovering himself today before the eyes of his servants, female servants, as one of the vulgar fellows shamelessly uncovers himself. And David said to Michael, It was before the Lord who chose me above your father and above all his house to appoint me as prince over Israel the people of the Lord, and I will celebrate before the Lord. I will make myself yet more contemptible than this, and I will be abased in your eyes. But by the female servants of whom you have spoken, by them I shall be held in honor. And Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no child to the day of her death. God struck her womb. He closed her womb. And she never bore a child because of her resentment toward her king, toward her husband, and because of his worship unto the Lord. That is how serious it is for someone to judge another person for worshiping God freely. And that story always struck me so hard to realize the depth of how serious our father takes the freedom of his saints to worship him. And it says, I'm, read, I'm going back to my notes. Growing up, and I wanted to share with you about myself. Growing up in a musical family, my grandmother was pianist, my mother was pianist, a guitarist, my grandfather was a drummer, he played banjo, piano, ukulele, um, harmonica, my uncle was musical, my, we all sang, um, and I grew up in that atmosphere, okay? We would have sing-alongs every Saturday, we would stand around the piano and all of us would sing, we'd do it all throughout the week, we would just sing whenever we wanted, but it wasn't Christian songs. You know, it was oldies. You know, my grandma was from the, she was born in 1912, my mother in 1937. So, you know, Sweet George Brown and When Irish Eyes Are Smiling. And, you know, these songs were the songs I grew up on. And during those years, we would be very demonstrative in our home. And then we'd attend church. And there I was taught not to do before the Lord what I was doing at home. I couldn't clap my hands. My grandmother couldn't play the piano. My mother couldn't sing and dance the way she did at home. And for a child, this confused me. This contradiction that I had to, I had to literally, as I grew up, I had to unlearn this teaching, okay? As I grew older and attended other churches that were more demonstrative in their worship, I realized that in my spirit, I had a witness that my worshiping God, my desire to clap my hands, my desire to raise my hands unto the Lord was right. It was holy. 
And as I studied the word, I realized just how important praise and worship were and how, how they, how they, um, the importance of them to the actual health of my spiritual walk with the Lord. I learned how important our worship is to God, how much it means with regards to preparing the atmosphere before a sermon or in my own quiet time with the Lord. Okay. One of the greatest gifts that you can offer the Lord is your heart and lips filled with worship and praise. Okay. And also remember that a true form of worship is choosing to live a life before God that conforms to his son and not to this world. Amen. Worship that comes from that deepest part of you, worship that is in spirit and in truth. It's a place from, it, it, it comes from your spirit and it, it comes from a place of truth from your heart. Now this is the kind of worship that pleases God our Father. And it's the kind of worship that he wants. And I want you to read with me Romans. We've read this before. So I know you all know, probably know where I'm going. But we're going to go to verse 12, or chapter 12. Goodness, I cannot get my finger to stop bleeding. I'm so sorry. It drives me nuts once it starts. And it just won't stop. We're going to go to chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to worship or to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and accountable and perfect. As you worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, as you live your life offering your body as a living sacrifice of worship to God, you will be able to know God's will more and more and more. And you will be able to figure out what is acceptable to God, what is perfect to God. I encourage you guys to take serious your worship and your praise unto the Lord. If you want peace, worship the Lord. If you want to feel his presence, worship the Lord from your heart and live your life in such a way that pleases our Father. And he will meet you. I promise. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you praise and we give you thanksgiving today. We thank you for worship and for praise. Lord, we thank you that you have given us permission and you've invited us to free ourselves before you in all of our adoration, to show you a passionate love, Father God, and to live our lives passionately. That, Father, we have permission from you and are invited to actively, demonstratively worship our Creator, worship our Savior. Lord, it's an honor to sing praises to you. It's an honor to lift my hands to you. It's an honor for me to make shouts of joy before you. It is. I love to clap my hands before you, to lift up holy hands in your presence. And I encourage every person here to do this in the privacy of their own home and to feel you and to feel your pleasure, your pleasure with them. Lord, let them walk in a heart that is filled with worship through the Spirit, and through truth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Guys, I love you. I love you. I love you. And I, I just pray that you would start, if you don't already do it, that you would start turning on some music and that you would just let yourself be free before God. That you would surrender and let your heart open up to Him because it is a wonderful experience to know that you are in the presence of the Most High King our Savior, and our Lord Jesus Christ. Be blessed. Help me spread the gospel by uh, commenting, liking this video, and sharing. And also, if you haven't subscribed to the new channel yet, please do because it's going to help it grow. I want to spread the gospel. I want to bring glory to our God. And I want the kingdom of God to advance on this earth. In Jesus' name, I love you, and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.